What's up, everybody? What's going on? Let me see here. All right, cool. Uh, so, it's Friday. That's good. That's always good. Uh, and I'm starting the stream a little bit early, which is also good, I guess. <laughs> uh, we're going to be working back on our witch a little bit today. And then, uh, depending on how much I get done, I have something else planned. Uh, we'll see, though. I'm going to be working mainly, I think, on the hands and doing some expression today. So feel free to ask any questions about, uh, you know, what I'm working on or anything else you see. It doesn't have to be what I'm working on. Don't feel like you have to wait till I'm working on a specific area or anything like that. But yeah, let's go ahead and get started. I'll give some time for some peeps to jump in, say hey, and uh, I'm probably just going to start here with the hands. I've, I was kind of looking at the sleeves a little bit before I started the stream, but I think uh, I think cleaning up our hands and expression are pretty much all I'm going to do uh, that's left for this girl, for our witch, and maybe some uh, additional stuff to the clothing just to um, get it not looking kind of so... Um, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, it's it's lacking some secondary forms that I think it could really use. So, let's grab one of our hands here. And uh, do a little bit of cleanup. Probably to both of these. The other one is uh, even worse than this. I don't think, uh, I think we just like dynamished this and left it. The knuckles and stuff are pretty, pretty grody here, so... I think we will uh, spend a decent amount of time doing this, and then, like I said, I have something else planned. But I'll wait to uh, to uh, show that until we get a little bit further here. But yeah, welcome everybody. I see some new people jumping in here. Welcome, guys. Hope you're having a good morning. I had a very eventful morning. I ended up drinking some tea last night. That was a uh, uh, it expired a couple years ago, so that was not a lot of fun. Well, well, it was fun at first. <laughs> the tea was, the tea was good. Like it tasted fine, but my body, my body rejected everything, <laughs> which was not fun. Oh no, yeah, yeah. It was a good time, good time. So we're drinking lots of water, you know, trying to fill, fill ourselves back up, rehydrate. <laughs> and uh, sculpt some hands here. Ooh, that's fun. I'm gonna leave that lid off. This thing, these Hydro Flasks are awesome. I love these things. The uh, I have two lids for them. I'm washing the other one in my dishwasher right now, but these things, they, uh, you have to unscrew them. Like, you have to spin it like eight whole times just to get it off. I mean, it's, it's a great product. Like, the it never leaks once you screw it on that tight, but uh, you have to sit there and like for like 30 seconds. It's annoying, but uh, it's much better than my uh, my last water bottle. If some of you remember that monstrosity. <laughs> All right. So what do I want to do here? I, I think I want to change the plane here. Shift these knuckles back. This hand is much more dirty than the other one. But the other one is more prominent. So in terms of amount of work, the other one probably just needs... A, you know, even though this one is worse for wear, the other hand probably needs more work still. So we'll sit here and play with this for a little while. And then maybe do some stuff with some asymmetry in the face, just a, a little bit more expression. Try to break some of that up. And then uh, I'll talk about what else I have planned. So I think I found something cool. Somewhat similar, uh, if you guys were around for the past couple days, we were working on... Oh, come on down here. This guy. Just something quick. Something to break up the monotony of working on our witch, since we'd been working on that for the past past couple days. We did some really quick, rough hair at the end, but spent a little bit of time on the face. They're not pretty clean. Uh, there's definitely some more stuff that I want to do on this if I was going to take it further, but I think for the most part, I'm kind of 
kind of done doing that. It was just a little doodle. It was a lot of fun to play with though. So let's get back here, back in here on this guy. Start cleaning up this knuckle some more. So I'm gonna push this plane back, trim down this back ridge, and just get these knuckles feeling a little bit, a little bit tighter. Right now, we've got this awkward kind of, well first of all, we want to clean up this plane for the back of our hand. Really get that nice and straight, make that feeling uh, not quite so flimsy, kind of liquidy all over the place. Definitely don't want that, especially for something that's like gripping. You want to get that really uh, tight feeling. Let's see if we can do that. I think we can. Like I said, I don't think there's a ton of ton of stuff we got to do down here. So let's just pinch in some more around here. Really start to get this plane change, and probably. Just some more trim around these areas. It's a little messy, but it's not a problem. Not hard to, not hard to clean up. They're very dirty. It's kind of a minor feature. Even though it is a hand, it's for the most part kind of hidden with a, a lot of other stuff around it. In general, if you guys are sculpting hands, I, I definitely recommend sculpting a lot of hands for practice, but try to sculpt hands that are grabbing things. It's uh, it's definitely definitely more of a challenge than just sculpting a hand even in like some kind of crazy pose. Sculpting hands can, uh, can be extremely tough. But getting that tension when you're grabbing something and then getting that area uh, of compression where it interacts with the thing that it's grabbing, it's always, always a challenge. No matter how many hands I've sculpted, I, uh, I always have to spend a lot more time on these kind of things. Also, it's Friday, which is great. Anybody got any cool plans for Friday? I'm doing some, well, <laughs> I'm doing some sculpting right now. Probably just doing, let's see, later today, I got some, some dinner plans with some family that I don't get to see super often. That'll be nice. Then occasionally, we'll see, we'll see if these plans hold up, but maybe tonight. So it's starting to get colder around here. So maybe, maybe, uh, maybe I'll be able to do a bonfire with some people. We've been trying to get some people together for a bonfire. It just kind of depends on availability with a lot of my, uh, my friends that are around here. And I don't think there's any plans in the work yet works yet but for the most part we're pretty spontaneous in terms of hey let's let's like get together and do something it's like who's available I'll just grab you we have one of those giant uh super annoying group chats which are always fun they're nice for i i think everybody in that group chat keeps uh keeps it muted but they're nice for for just like making plans really quick that's pretty much the only reason I still have a, fa a per like a personal Facebook account, is just for uh, just for that group chat. <laughs> if if that did not exist, I don't think I would have my own Facebook account. I haven't posted or done anything with my own Facebook account in quite a long time. All right, so those knuckles are are way way better now, but. 
you know, we could still sit here and clean those up even more. But just fixing that plane of the knuckles, getting that feeling tighter through there. Getting some of that break up. Still, still very blocky, kind of awkward in, uh, in that backside view. I don't think it's bad enough that it's going to stick out super bad though. Super bad. So I'll probably, uh, probably leave it for the most part. And I'm not trying to make this perfect. It's probably like good enough for for this type of uh, distance read. The knuckles before though were really awful in capturing the light there, that transition, in a super crappy way. So I did not like that at all. But now I think it's. It's okay. All right, let's look at this other hand now. Engine and Pelmy, welcome guys. What's up? How's your uh, How's your Friday going? <clears> Who? <throat> oh, my throat doesn't die on me. All right, so with this hand, mainly what's bothering me is just the awkward, uh, awkward shadow areas that we're getting here from the front. So I think uh, I just clean up some of these little little uh, concave areas where we're getting those really sharp shadows. I think we'll be in a, a lot better shape. I think what I'm actually going to do is is like round out that that bottom plane. I see this actually quite often in stylized characters where they will they will have the knuckle information on the top for the hit but they won't have it on the bottom. And it creates a really appealing kind of like straight versus curve shape for the individual fingers. It's very nice. So if we can maybe do that, I think that would be, that would definitely help with these awkward, super strong shadowed areas that we're getting on our fingers. So let's do that a little bit. Oh no, Injun. <laughs> you lost again? Hey, look. You gotta stop gambling away all your, your polygons. Your poly count's getting lower and lower. <laughs> oh man. I, look, I can't bail you out. I can't just give you more, give you more polygons and increase your poly count. I can't do that. I think I actually might be able to do that. But look, you're not going to learn your lesson if I do that. You're just going to keep gambling them away. Until you got nothing left. So let's try to get that more straight on top for those knuckle plane changes. I think this will be in a, a real good area. I like this one a lot. 150 left, what? <laughs> you had like seven or 800 just the other day, didn't you? Oh man. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but watch, by the end of the stream, you'll have like a thousand. You gotta win it back. You gotta, you gotta go. Go big or go home. Come on. Let's see it. <laughs> no, I shouldn't, I shouldn't encourage you. So just a little, we want to avoid these like concave shapes. I want to get more of this curve on the bottom of the finger. So essentially we have like that one, two, three hit on the, the, um, the top of the finger, the knuckle side. 
and then round it out on the bottom. Get that nice straight V curve shape language that we love. Love to see. And hello everybody else that's joining us. What's going on guys? Hope you're having a good Friday so far. We're working on some hands for the time being. Probably not too much longer. Working on this and then we'll probably work on some kind of asymmetry in the face, slight expression. And uh, be pretty close to calling this girl done. Maybe some more stuff with the clothing at some point. Just some uh, secondary forms to break up how uh, rigid some of this is feeling. For the most part, we're, we're really close to being done with this, though. So. Uh, but after, probably after we do a little bit with the face, a little bit of some expression stuff of something else planned that we're going to be working on today, uh, which I think will be a lot of fun, kind of in the similar vein of... Uh, this guy, I found another concept, or before we had like six, seven, I think seven different heads that we were looking at while we worked on this guy, just to use those as a reference. Uh, but I found something else that I would like to uh, try to stick a little bit closer to that's also a bust. Uh, I'll show you guys that in a little bit. But we need to get rid of this this super strong, awkward shadowing that we got going on in our palm. I really think I'm just going to get a nice curve flow through here and see uh, see how that's reading. So I, I think just having those hard shadows down here is really just drawing the eye way too much, and it looks looks kind of kind of dumb, but yeah, getting that flat so that the uh, shadow is not super strong on there. That's what I'm trying to accomplish right now. I guess not flat, but avoiding the, uh, the like normal separation lines of the hand that you might see. Something like this might be okay. But let's plane it out a little bit, a little bit better first. bit I think. Just how far that's swinging forward. I can't remember why I did this that strong. I think it was to force the silhouette to do something. Maybe just for that angle. Yeah. I don't know. We'll play with it a little bit here. Uh, Digi, what up? Hello, hello. What is going on? We're fingering. I can't believe I just said that with a straight face. We're working on fingers. <laughs> what I'm going to call working on fingers for all my characters now. I'm just fingering my samurai. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> sorry, I'm uh, sculpting fingers for my samurai. Gotcha. 
All right, a little bit more cleanup. Kind of get, I don't know if I can sharpen up some of these just to get that plain break. Like, trying to get that a little bit more from the top. Without getting so much of that dip in. Dipping. A little, little bit like that. All right. Um, shadows nowhere near as uh, terrible as before. This is the main thing that we were trying to get rid of in in these. For the most part, I just need this kind of distance read. I don't. It's not like these are going to be inspected super close. So let's jump in on the face, playing around with some expression a little bit. I think I'll, uh, let's see here, can hide everything except for the face. That didn't work. There we go. All ah, crap. Put this back up here real quick. Skirt. Okay, so slight asymmetry, slight expression. Not too much though. Uh, Lord Cap, Lord Cap Art, thank you for the follow. What's going on? Welcome to the stream. We're about to work on some expression, some very minor expression, and then we have something else planned, which we'll play more with here in a moment. Um, let's see. A little more knuckle bend on the last two fingers. We'll have to go back and look. Uh, what size Cintiq is that? Uh, I I don't know. I think uh, it's it's li all my gears listed below. If you want to check out any of that, it's the biggest one that they have. Or at least it was when I bought it. All right, so, I don't know, I think we're just gonna add like some slight asymmetry to this. I don't think we're gonna go too crazy. A lot of expression comes from your eyebrows and from your eyes. So, just even tweaking some of this stuff can uh, can really change the way your character feels. Let's see. Start by just moving these around a tad. to follow that some. Just a little. Really you'd be surprised by how much you don't need to shift your brow line. But if we're ever going to pull up the corner of the lip, you kind of want to follow that shape through to the cheek and typically to the eyelid as well. I was thinking about maybe just closing her eyes a little bit more in general. I 
kind of liking that. Trying to get that to flow a little bit nicer through there. Just so she doesn't feel quite so, quite so blank as she's feeling right now. I don't think it's going to take a lot to move this stuff around. Let's grab one of our lashes here. I'm going to start by pulling this around a little bit. This is asymmetrical right now, so I can't work on both of these at the same time, unfortunately. So I'd probably put these both in a, like a similar, or start like moving these in a similar fashion to close these eyes a little bit more. So we're starting to pull the cheeks up and start adding some more of that like smile, like I said. Lips, cheeks, eyelids, all of them are gonna, you know, affect one another. Uh, Nova, what's uh, what's up, man? Welcome back. Checked out your uh, art station, which uh, which I saw. I saw that you saw. <laughs> uh, bitter, bittersweet affair with my Cinti. <laughs> oh no, I don't know what that means. Uh, need to try a Cintiq someday. Want one for home? Yeah. They're, they're nice, they're nice. Uh, you get same quality for less. I mean, you can't get the same quality for less. You can get, you can still get good quality though for less. The competitors are thankfully, you know, putting in good work though and creating some some good machines to work with. Wacom definitely needs the competition. If they go unchecked for so long, they'll just, you know continue to jack those prices even more if they can. But I don't plan on buying a new tablet of any kind anytime soon. If anything, the next thing I'll get way down the road will be a uh, some version of whatever the newest Mobile Studio Pro will be at that time. That's starting to feel more, get, getting into a realm to feel more natural. I want that eye wrap to feel really good, which I think it is still. I'm 
Unfortunately, I can't even use like local sim right now because uh, we're tilted on an axis here. But it's fine. Let's see. I think that's starting to feel a little bit too flat. You have the uh, the uh, touch version of what I have, I think. Yeah, I don't I don't like touch. The only thing that's cool about the uh, the touch features, at least in my mind, I, I think because I had a Cintiq with touch before this one, I it always got in the way. Uh, very annoying. Uh, even if you disable it, like sometimes some drivers freak out and you have to reset your your Wacom set your Wacom settings, and then you have to like uh, it's just it's frustrating. I do not like the touch. The only thing it's cool with is in Photoshop, you can like pinch and like move your document around, which is really cool. If you could do that in ZBrush just super easily and nicely, that might be worth it. But I think overall, I'm, I'm just so used to navigation that like it would probably just, you know, interacting with my palm or anything else would just be annoying. Yeah, two and ones. Two and ones are pretty cool as well. Uh, no, this is not nice, clean topology. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> Don't. We have we have some edge loops around the lips and the uh, eyes, uh, and they're decent, but they're not they're not great by any means. Uh, I just did these with uh, with poly groups, um, which isn't super hard. It's actually we did something similar on this dude here to create his topology for his face, which is not super clean either. But it gets the job done. We, uh, if you guys are interested in seeing the, the full process for making this character, we, we made the whole thing on stream yesterday and the day before. So you can check that out uh, on my YouTube channel. Uh, let's see. The UG tablets, or the the Uggy, the Uggy tablets. <laughs> um, I have not. I've not heard much about those. I've heard some good things about the Huion tablets, but not the not the UG ones. It is the touch is very frustrating. Yeah. I feel like we're maybe 
Starting to lose some volume over here. And I feel like I could shift her mouth down or just move her jawline and chin up a little. One of these two. Try a very slight move down on the mouth as a whole. Very slight. Might have been too much. Trying to think, like, hmm, maybe a little bit more volume on her left cheek as well. Feels like it's starting to lose some of that. You can definitely see that here from the side or from the top, top down. Starting to feel a lot more natural though. Um, even just getting some of those slight asymmetries in here as we work is very nice. I think our eyes are still just low res. We haven't even subdivided those at all. If we want, we can always come through and manually paint in a farkle. I'll do this a lot on eyes and remove the actual reflective material. I think for her it's alright though. We can probably set up our lighting situation in such a way to get that to work nicely. Maybe not quite so bright from the front. All right. Let me save this out really quick here. Gravy Nova. <laughs> Thank you for that beautiful name. By the way, hey guys, we never named our, uh, our buff boy. You guys need to come up with a name for this dude. just hang out up here in the corner for a little bit. <laughs> oh, crap. That's my fault. Alright, let me put her over here. Or actually, I, I guess I can't. I'll put her down here in the corner. Cool. You go there for a little bit. Okay, so let me see here. Chad, Chad, what's up? Welcome to the stream. 
Uh, do you have to put this into Maya for topology? Uh, no, I wouldn't be posing uh, this character if I was going to retop of it. Uh, this is this is not for real time. Uh, I I learned with real clay. I I've done a very slight little bit of, of things with real clay. Not not a lot. I have some monster clay though. <laughs> Large McHuge. Large McHuge is his is his name. I mean, Buffles Mc Buffles McBrows. <laughs> Uh, let's see, <laughs> Satori Hanzo, nice, um, <laughs> Daijo Busan, <laughs> let's see, I like, <laughs> uh, I like the McBrows, McBrows is very good, uh, <laughs> Digi, Digi welcome to the stream, and thank you for the follow, um, let's see, Mc, or, uh, yeah, McBrows, McBrows is good, Buffles, Hmm. Let's go with Hanzo. We'll just straight up call him Hanzo. Hanzo McBrow. <laughs> I'm into it. Um, okay, so next. Bam. Bam bam bam. Uh, this is a concept that I found just yesterday by someone. By Niji Lee on ArtStation. Check out their work for sure. Let's see. Real quick, I'll just pull her over here, uh, so you can see how to spell their name. Uh, this this actual thing that I found is not on uh, not on her art station specifically, which is why I don't have the link open for that. But uh, I think I found it. I don't remember where I found it, but anyway, we're gonna be working on this boy for a little bit. So we're gonna start from scratch. Start with a beautiful little sphere, as we always do. And get to work sculpting. Uh, let's see. Floppers mix spooper flubes. Wow. That's a Chucky, Chucky McJawline. <laughs> oh, save some of these names, guys. We're going to need some of these names over here for this new guy. All right, so so actually I was thinking, we could either start from scratch like we did uh, did with this dude here, which which is absolutely fine, that was a lot of fun. Or, we can drop this guy down to the lowest res and start using this so you can see how even something that is not even close proportionally or Probably geometrically, I'd have to change a lot of stuff here. Maybe we do that. Let's try that. Let's start with the, with, um, what was it? Hanzo. Hanzo McBrows. Let's start with this guy. And, uh, and transform him. Transformation Tuesday. Except it's Friday, which is much better than Tuesday. So, I will be deleting a bunch of junk on this guy. And I don't really I'll I'll be changing those eyelashes and I'll be changing the brows and the eyes and everything else. So I think we're just gonna start with just the head on that we made. And I'm even going to delete all of our subdivision levels and I'm going to mirror and weld. Uh, I'm going to fix this a little bit and then mirror and weld. Let's make sure that we're not completely breaking something here. So if you're interested, guys, and for some people that are new here, seeing how we made this from scratch, there is a... Uh, playlist on my YouTube channel where you can watch the, the entire process for that. I think, yeah, I think we need a few more characters. Here, you know what? I'll just load in like the last 10 things I worked on really quick. <laughs> now, uh, I think I'm actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna delete our, eh, you know, we'll just hold on to her. She's not going anywhere. 
Uh, let's uh, let's clear our canvas though. So we just got our focus here. Let's go black and white. Got our clay material set up. And let's let's do this. I, I in all in all honesty, I kind of want the freedom of starting from a sphere just because I like doing that so much. So who knows? I might play around with this for let's play around for a few minutes, see what we can do. And if we just want to start from scratch, we'll do that. I I like having something to start from a lot of the time. It just uh just kind of depends. If we're doing something for production, obviously we want to start from from something. He's got a long boy neck. Wow. It's a giraffe. We'll probably even slice off the neck. Not that it will matter for now. All right. I need symmetry on. All right, let's start pushing, pulling, and screwing up everything that we've spent such a long time building. McBrowse is getting Mick destroyed. Probably, what do we want to do here? He's got some really hard lines in his face, kind of similar to what this guy had. Maybe we can, uh, whoa, maybe use some of that to our advantage. This guy's face had a very plainer kind of shelf to it. It's got that strong man just uh, like sh shooting forward jaw. This is gonna be, I think, a little bit closer to what we would normally expect. Even though we don't have a profile view, I wanna get really good face wrap on this dude. So we're gonna start getting some of this early. So some of the things I want to focus on are going to be these like very strong planar changes that we're getting. Which this guy had a little bit of that stuff going on. He's also got real big eyes. I think this is... I think this is maybe supposed to be Justin Bieber. I, I actually don't know. It wasn't listed as like supposed to be anybody. Typically, what this, uh, what Miji Lee does is she, she takes like images of actual people. That's an illustration, but she'll take images and then convert them into her style. So let me see. Uh, like this one. Like take a picture of somebody and then Mejiify it. So this this reminds me of Justin Bieber. Kinda has a similar face. I don't know if it's supposed to be him or not though. Oh, I closed my my stream. One second here. This is my chat. Um let's see. Do you post all your videos on YouTube? Yeah, yes I do. 
So if you miss anything, no big deal. Or if you can't make a stream, not a problem. There should be a link below to my YouTube channel. So the first thing I do when I'm starting to work on a face, typically, if we're starting off from just a sphere, is getting that first kind of triangular shape of the face. It actually depends on the face because with our with this dude, obviously, we had this like very planar face here. I just want to start shifting this though, get more of the correct angles that we're going to be looking for. It's got a very long or tall face. Very thin nose, very defined planes in general. This strong kind of kind of um, sunken in eyes let's see we want to square this jaw whoops square the side of his head out quite a bit so let's come to the back view here and just start pulling out that jawline. So we'll get that nice and squared off. His ears are sticking out really far. We can maybe worry about that later, but might as well just do it now since I called it out. It's really hard to um, mess with these ears. They're like really tight in here. So I think I'll polygroup this, make this a little bit easier on myself in the future. And I don't have perspective on while I'm doing any of this right now. I'm kind of just eyeballing this. If we want to, I mean, we can even overlay this with our, with the skull. The face definitely needs to be longer, but let me finish squaring this out, doing this stuff. We can maybe overlay this. One nice thing about using the Spotlight tool in ZBrush, and start to overlay some of this stuff. So you can just grab this dude here. I don't normally do this. Normally I do a lot of stuff by eye. I think that's really the, uh, the better way if you're really trying to practice and improve. Alright, so this isn't symmetrical, so I'm gonna have to... This isn't like aligned perfectly with the neck and everything else. There's a lot of stuff that's off-center here. So let's, uh, I guess let's just line up our eyes and then we'll use that for the... the kind of, um... figuring out where everything else is. What am I looking for here? Movie, timeline, show. There we go. Okay. So let's make this face longer. Really stretch some things around. So this is one way that you can do this. Like I said, I like to do a lot of stuff kind of by eye. It's really up to you. Also, why is that snapping down there? That was weird. Make those ears a bit larger. So we figure out proportionally what this is gonna look like. Okay, so let's move this over now, move this back. Since we got some of those like bigger, bigger proportional changes. Now, I'm gonna be, so we don't have a side view, right? So what do you do in those situations where you don't have uh, multiple views? You don't have your perfect model sheet set up for you. Well, you're gonna have to use your past experience and knowledge of just anatomy and forms, 
how things are supposed to look to do the best that you can. We'll keep messing with this for a while. Uh, yeah, yes, definitely go check it out, man. Um, does your sculpting course cover texturing and coloring? Uh, so I don't know which course you're you're referring to. I have a few on there. Uh, let's see here. So on my Gumroad, there is my Quick Start ZBrush course. Uh, we cover really rudimentary poly painting. If you're very new to digital sculpting and ZBrush in general, cover that. How to use those tools. Not a lot of texturing though. Uh, the texturing that we do cover in there, uh, we cover some sculptural texturing uh, and how you can do some stuff with like skin textures and stuff like that. Uh, in uh, the uh, sculpting for, for toys and collectibles, uh, I would say even less texturing. Or, uh, and then in the... Um, Silent Appealing Female Face, my most recent one, uh, to the degree that you can see in this image. Uh, oh, and also I will mention, uh, since I haven't even shown my Gumroad this stream yet, uh, some people were asking for me to upload these on Instagram, these base mannequins. There are five of them, if you guys are interested. So I just threw them up on Gumroad for a dollar. You can grab those. I just uploaded those last night. So they're just sculptural bases, if you guys are working on characters. Uh, a few different like exaggerated body proportions and uh, styles. And then uh, some, I like this guy a lot, he was fun. But yeah, I just made those a while ago and never did anything with them and posted them yesterday and a few people asked me to upload them. So, grab them if you want them. They're only one doll hair. A single doll hair. All right, so we wanna get I want to get a good amount of depth on this face. I saw somebody sculpt one of uh, Meiji's characters recently, and it really lacked depth. And it, it's really obvious when you see something like that. And I'm, I'm not... I can maybe find it really quick. Let's see... It might have been on the front page. Or actually here. Uh, what's her name? We'll do this. Search projects. Recent. This one. So this looks this looks really good. I uh, or it looks really good from the front. And I'm not like calling out this person at all. But I, I'll, you'll see this often, so here's the, where is it, this one. So, you know, you only have one view here that you're working from. If you look at the side of the, like, based on the light and shadow, there's a lot of depth going on here for sure. But looking from the side view here, it just gets really flat. It looks, it looks fantastic from the front, it really does. And I'm, I'm not doing this to, like I said, call this person out. It just starts to feel really, really flat from the side view. So, just be aware of that, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And when you are seeing this, when you only have one view, one reference image, you're gonna have to find a way to, um, to figure out the rest of these forms, whether it's finding someone with a similar face type or just finding some references online. I'm just going off of what I know and uh, playing around with some, some different shapes here. And as I try new things, see what works, see what doesn't, then go from there. So that's, that's how I'm kind of doing this, but I, I do want to be very careful that we are not losing a lot of that, that depth. It's very important. Because we are working in three dimensions. We have to, uh, we have to make all of it look good, not just from one angle. So I, now that we got like the basic kind of 
These eyes are very flat, aren't they? That eye line. It's rare that you see that. Uh, but it doesn't look bad. What was I saying? I don't know. Oh, so I got the basic proportions, and now I'm trying to get a lot of these hard, hard line transitions here in the face, down through the cheekbone, kind of separating the face a little bit. Whoa. I'm like pinching down through there. Looks like his mouth is even more, more small than I have it. And then we'll have to square out that jaw, but let's start planing some of this out. Look at this from really extreme views, make sure that things are looking good. But I mean, we've already warped this pretty far from what it originally was, right? What are we at, like 400 strokes? And I make a lot of strokes. I'm like all over the place. Try out the, the first course, the intro, quick start guide. Awesome, man. Just let me know if you have any uh, any questions or anything. All my, uh, all my contact info and stuff is in there, so if you run into any problems, I would be happy to help you out, dude. Um, does anyone know how I'm toggling between high and low poly? Yeah, so I do. <laughs> Uh, you have your subdivision levels down here that I'm stepping up and down through. All this will be covered in, uh, in that course as well, that, that quick start guide. Uh, but the hotkeys for that are Shift D and just the letter D, and Control D subdivides up an extra step. That's down here in Geometry, Tool Geometry. Let's plane out our nose more. Oh man. Okay, so so I went for a walk yesterday. Um, and the shoes that I own, the the back, I don't know what you would call it, like the back part of the heel, like the lip where you're, like the very top part, like the sleeve of your shoe. Um, I was wearing really short, uh, short socks and they rubbed me so bad, so so bad, so bad that uh, both of my ankles were bleeding by the time I got back. It was not good. It was it was in fact bad. <laughs> it was not not okay. I'm gonna go open my door. It's getting really warm in here. that my, my heat wasn't on. What's going on, everybody? Got some new people jumping in, it looks like. How's your Fridays going so far? Anybody get short or like half day Fridays anymore? Is that, is that a thing? I know that's like a popular thing during the summer. Also kind of depends what hemisphere you live in. So the more I sit here and like pinch and pull and warp this around, this geometry, <laughs> it's getting pretty crazy, right? So we're definitely gonna have to um, remesh this at some point. starting to get more and more rounded. It's like really just... Uh, 
really define this turn here. I'm almost to the point I think where I'd want to Dynamesh. Almost. These subdivs are still always, you know, nice to have. And I like this nose shape a lot. Very kind of standard uh, pyramid-y shape going on here. Got the Ninja Turtle nostril mask. If you guys have ever seen that illustration for how to draw a nose. Just leave early so I can grab a beer on the way home. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm into it. What kind of beer? What kind of beer you like? I don't drink too much anymore. Like, very rarely. But I still... I, I have a few favorites. I'm picking up some... Either Hobgoblin or Dragon's Milk tonight, which are the nerdiest sounding beers, but they're also actually the best beers. Uh, I really like uh, any left hand beers as well. Uh, the Nitro. Nitro Milk Stout is super good. It's one of my, one of my go-to's. Okay. I'm gonna be dynameshing here soon. That's right. Um, I remember in uh, in Chicago, your feet were dying because you were wearing your, or maybe you weren't wearing your your like I don't know what those shoes are called. They're like the sock, the sock shoes or whatever. Uh, wearing a brand new pair of shoes your first day of work as well. Rookie mistake. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. So I had. Oh my gosh, they're so bad. <sighs> my sock is actually sticking to to them, but I. <laughs> As soon as I got back, I was like two band aids slapping on the uh, slapping on the ankles there. Um, sours lately? Oh no! Oh my gosh! I'm so sorry. Sours are actually the worst thing that you could possibly drink. <laughs> I hate sours. They're just it's like eat. It's like drinking, uh, like actual candy or Sour Patch Kids, or something like that. I don't want. I don't want that. They're actually sour. Why? Why would you do such a thing? So that's a criminal offense. I'm calling the police. <laughs> I've. I. I could see how they could grow on you, and I'm sure. If I really gave him a chance, I would probably start to like him, but that's not going to happen. I refuse. I refuse to give them a chance. Z-Hawk, welcome back. What's going on?
So, normally when I do eyelids, I'll insert some separate geometry and play with them that way for quite a while. Just to get a really clean like separation through this area. So the way I'm doing this now, since this is like kind of already in here, I'm just masking off that area and pushing back to get some of that that actual depth there. Get that feeling really nice. And then we'll continue to work on that. Up here, like that rounded edge is not what we want right now. But up here we have a little bit of a plane break here it looks like. So this can definitely be pushed in further. Then up through here and around. And then it kind of thins out pretty, pretty strongly. We'll have to mess with that shape too. Let's see. What is going on with his forehead? This thing is like all over the place. That plane break though. Working on a, uh, just working on a sculpt, Z-Hawk, nice. How's that coming along, man? A guy playing guitar? That's cool. Modeling a guitar sounds like fun. Oh, you were you were watching somebody streaming playing a guitar and you're like, eh, why not? <laughs> That's funny. I've never seen someone streaming music. That's cool though. It makes sense that that would be a popular thing. I have to do something here to make this transition a little bit more sharply. As long as we're getting there proportionally, we're, we're fine. We're in good shape. Alright, now I think we'll look at the lips a little bit, and then probably just dynamesh this in some respect. It's going to be best to just uh, open this up while we still can. 
It's nice that we have this. I mean, technically, we could just remesh what we have. But there's some things that are pretty funky in our eyes. Eh, I don't know, actually. Let's let's try maybe deleting some edge loops, increasing like this outer edge or something. I don't have to dynamesh, I guess. We'll play with it. Alright, so first things first. Obviously. It's feeling alright, but now let's get the hit of the actual lips. Let's just start. It's actually got a pretty tight line right here. We can try to get this in. This will probably help. That's a little bit of a weird choice. I think I'll just carry this line through. Because that's actually where that should be. And we're getting like uh, up here. Let's see. Just want to exaggerate that a little bit at first. And let's see here. Try to point up that cheekbone. And we'll try to play with this transitional area quite a bit. Much just like a little trapezoid there for his mouth. Wish it was that easy in 3D. We need a little bit more depth in these eyes, too. Just from looking at the three-quarter view there, now that I actually turn perspective on, that's feeling a little bit better. Uh, you can link, yeah, yeah, you can absolutely post a link. I was able to fix the, the Nightbot that blamed everybody. Before Nightbot took no prisoners. No holds barred. Um, let's see. Keep pinching this mouth up. Work on this transition. Whoa. Where is the song ended? Bama! <laughs> oh, Bama! Welcome, Bama! Really confused me. The song started right when that happened. But either way, welcome to the stream, Bama. I hope you're having a good Friday.
What is the past president of the United States up to? Apparently he just goes by bombing now. I feel like I've really made it in the big leagues. Got a president following me. NBD. This is very loud. I'll turn that down. Uh, what Z Rush version is this? Uh, new follower. Yeah, thank you, man. Uh, yeah, it's just the newest, uh, the most recent, 2018.1. <laughs> yeah, guys, uh, I want you to call me for now on, uh, Folygon followed by past president of the United States. I ha my name must always include this honorific. Kind of a big deal now. This is now a, a, a president's only stream, so I'm gonna need everybody else to just skedaddle. This sound, this uh, sounds kind of Halloweeny. Some spooky music. I need a spooky playlist. When is Halloween? Halloween's on a is Halloween on a Wednesday this year. It is. It is on a Wednesday. Ooh, what are we gonna do on Halloween, guys? I have to do something, something fun. Make something ultra spooky. Oh, you know what? We're gonna have to fix that this line here. here. Clean up some of this garbage real quick. Shifting this edge over some. Get that nasal labial fold feeling a little bit. A bit more similar there. And I guess I think we're in a pretty good uh, good place to start cleaning up some of this geometry. Let's see. Wah! Said bug eyed. It's beautiful. Bug eyed and beautiful. I'll have to figure out eye position and size here. Normally I insert the eyes and do those with the, the lids and everything else at the same time. But we have 
for those that I guess are just joining us, we have taken uh, an old character that I made over the past two days. This dude, his eyes and everything aren't in, because it'd be, I'd have to turn everything on here. Or I guess I still probably have it all in the same place except for the eyes. But yeah, he was a lot of fun to work on. And uh, that's on my YouTube channel if you're interested in that whole process. But then we just started warping this guy here. Getting closer to this. We're going to continue to do that. Uh, let's see here. New Halloween movie came out today. Nice. I should ask Twitch to change my name. I asked Twitch support to change my name maybe like two month, a month or two ago. And Twitch support is extremely slow getting back to you. Because I actually own the account for Folygon without the underscore. I just, it, it's on an old email that doesn't exist anymore. So I can't get into it and delete it and then switch my switch my name to not have the underscore right now. The email address was associated with a a website that I had and I owned the email address for that like like at at polygon.com or whatever. But I stopped paying for the email address because I stopped using it. And now that account is forever locked to me. So that's nice. Twitch support is very slow though. I guess I'm just going to jump into Dynamesh. I think it's going to be easier to clean up a lot of this kind of garbage. Anywhere where it's stretching really hard, I'll probably like re-cut off these ears so I can fix the head. It's got like a cool little, let's see. A little transition down here. These polys are super stretched. You heart nano mesh. Nano mesh is pretty cool. I don't use it very often. Some neat stuff you can do with that though. Oh, <laughs> at Folygon followed by former President Obama. Way better name. Yes, I will have to change my username <laughs> to that. These polygons are so stretched down here, it's really hard to plane these out or adjust them in any way. I don't want to 
play nice. A lot of this doesn't want to play nice. So, so I think let's split some stuff and clean up our face. Just gonna straight up slice our mouth right across the middle. And our eyes are actually too slanted. They need to be more more in line with one another. Corners of our eyes at least. It's got very round eyes too. I'm not actually sure how I'm going to clean up those eyelids. I might smooth this area out and then reapply eyelids just so that I can make them the correct shape and make them very clean. Because the way this is right now, it's just going to be a pain to, to do that. So let me try dynameshing this really fast. Simple and easy to remember, yeah. Wow, it's uh, very rare that you get Dynamesh to go over uh, or up to like five million. Very rare. It uh, it's not normally possible. Should drop it quite a bit though. Now I can start cleaning up all these stupid stretching polys that we had going on over here. Clean up our jawline. Get a nice mouth bag going. all the stretching going on in the neck. Start sculpting this out a little bit. you're doing it's actually fairly a fairly complex shape I'll have to like push that in and pull out this ridge here quite a bit Let's see. Let's see, let's see. Starting to clean up a little bit around this ear. Let's get that jawline. Probably we'll mess with that in a little bit. For the most part though, just getting rid of that terribly stretched 
topology when we're going from something that's such a different shape and we start warping to the degree that we have here it, uh, it really starts to to work things in a undesirable way it's really hard to work with that kind of geometry Still taking a break from our witch character that we've been working on. We did a little bit of that right before we started working on this dude. Not too much, just mainly a little bit to the hands and then the, um, which some materials need to be reapplied here I'm noticing. Mainly just to the hands and a little bit of some additional expression around the face. Not a ton of stuff, but uh, I think she's almost done. There's maybe some more stuff I want to do with the clothing, and uh, probably the hands and face deserve a second, or not a second pass, but an additional pass. Other than that, though, she's really close to being done. She's turning out really cool. It's a good little October slash Halloween themed project. Trying to get that plane break there a little bit better. Mm. He's got like very, uh, very distinct turns in the surface of his ear. Kind of similar to, to that last big buff boy that we did. Kind of similar, similar, uh, similar style. Uh, Nanomesh is super nice for all the repeating elements. Uh, you can move around the placement mesh as you adjust proportions and all your volumes are preserved. Very cool. Yeah, you can, uh, you can use Nanomesh to actually instance pieces, which is pretty sweet. There's a, I think, I, I should have a tutorial for that on my YouTube channel if anybody's interested in that. You can do some pretty pretty nifty things with nano mesh. So if you're like creating like a hard surface piece and you want to duplicate it around in multiple places or let's say like you have the like um, layered samurai style armor for example and if you edit one of those layers, you want all those other layers of armor to uh, change as well. You can do that with Nano Mesh. It's pretty sweet. But yes, that should be in the tutorials playlist on my channel. It's actually a pretty recent tutorial, I think, that I made.
bit weird here in the corner. So let's add some volume here. It's okay if there's a little bit of overlap. This will actually, let's see. Once I dynamesh these together, it won't even matter. We're still just trying to make sure that this shape is feeling a little bit closer to what I'm seeing. This is also why I split the face. I split the face for a number of reasons, but being able to just very quickly get under here and start working on some of these areas. It's real nice. That's your plan long term, yeah. So you can just edit one. It's it, yeah. I mean, it makes sense. I guess it kind of depends on how many instances of something that you have, but if oh shit, yeah, I knew that was gonna happen. It always happens on the move brush. I don't know why. It happens when I'm switching between sub tools really fast and. Blah, blah, blah. It's always annoying, but not a big deal. We didn't lose anything. It quick saved. Um, yeah, definitely check out Miji. Miji Lee, she's the one who did this concept that we're playing around with. She's got a lot of other cool stuff uh, that is great if you guys are looking for some cool, uh, cool references to work off of. Uh, also, for people that are new here, check out my Gumroad. There's a link below. Some cool stuff on there. Tutorials, courses, base meshes. Uh, I'll also mention, I mentioned this, I think, at the beginning of the stream. Uh, I posted these on on my socials. I have five different mannequins here. And some people were asking me to upload those. So I threw them up here on Gumroad late last night. And if you're interested in getting some base meshes that you can use for sculpting, these are all high res. But uh, there's five different ones. You can get them all for a dollar if you're interested. But, uh, yeah, cool. I think this is... Maybe. Come on. There we go. Working now. Grab our recovered tool. Get back to work on this guy. Oh! My config is messed up. My UI. There we go. Uh, we also want our spotlight back, please. Sweet. All right, let's get back into it. Where was I? I was pulling out some of this shape in the cheekbone, just so we're not getting super convex here. I think we have a decent balance. Let's turn on perspective and look at this a little bit more. And it's a little inflated, I think, around the side of the head. There's some stuff I think that we could do to start Moving, shifting this plane. Same up here, we're getting this awkward concave. Uh, 
All right, so I'm, I'm just trying to shift this plane to be a little bit more angular. And I think we've started to get that. Let's see. I'm clean a bunch of junk down here that we started to do with the neck. For the most part, I really just want this line since that's what I can see in the illustration. See down here. I, I'm so I'm trying to think how I'm going to do the eyelids. I might just insert some new geometry up there so that I can manipulate it a little bit easier with something that's low res. Because sculpting on this, I don't really like for the most part. This is like pretty. It's just hard to manipulate and get really clean shapes, which is why I will be remeshing this later. For this kind of stuff, it's totally fine. I can sit here and, you know, trim out a lot of this, start to fix this plane quite a bit. Right now, it's just very, a lot of these awkward, like, surface turns that we don't necessarily want. Which is what I'm trying to get rid of for the most part right now. And I'm fine with merging these together. Actually, let's put a cylinder in his mouth for his teeth. I guess I'll just duplicate. You can initialize any piece of geometry to become a primitive, which is always nice. Uh, but with this, I will crease this ring here. There we go. That looks a lot better. Uh, KJ. KJ does. Welcome to the stream and thank you for the follow. What is going on? We about to insert some teeth. Or just a cylinder to represent teeth actually. Um, <laughs> I don't remember what I said <laughs> or why you said that, but yes, I agree. You got to remember. <laughs> Sometimes I say things unintentionally like that, and I am very sorry for those. <laughs> When I'm sculpting and talking at the same time, anything goes. <laughs> I'm hardly paying attention to what I'm saying. So any tips I give at this stage are, are pretty much all just a lie. Don't listen to anything I say. I'm, I'm useless. <laughs> it's not completely true. But it is, it's very hard to talk and sculpt at the same time, which is why I try to kind of try to jump back and forth a little bit really tough uh, in, in some areas, you know, if I'm working on eyes and doing some specific stuff here with the silhouette. Gotta focus a little bit more. Some little quick changes though, like what I'm doing to the lips right now. Not super hard. Not taking too much brain power, for the most part. Getting a nice transition there. We will definitely work on how dirty this is and how um, how these planes are shaping up down here. These will all be fixed, so no worries.
Alright, so these eyelids. Hmm. I'm gonna try sculpting them a little bit at first, and I'll probably end up... I don't know, we'll see how it goes. I'll, I'll sculpt on them for a little bit, and just... Just see what I can do, but there's... Like, pl plainly, the planes up here need to change quite a bit. And that's going to end up messing up my, my eyelid as well. I'm going to do some of this. Probably won't leave that in super rough, probably just like fade this out and have this be a soft transition or something there. For the most part though, I don't really have the plane that I need on this way for the zygomatic. We got it a little bit. Yeah, I don't really like. We'll just completely remove this, I think. Really through here, though. That's where it's needing the most clean up, and then up into this eyelid, and then we start getting around here in the top portion of the eye. Whoops. Uh, let's see, how do we want to do this? How shall I smite them? How shall I not completely F this up? So this is why, just because this is going to be so hard to mess with this eyelid here and really carve this out which is fine it's gonna be hard to control this annoyingly so so I think what I'll do and this gets really thick here way too thick and this is too thin Let's just work on this area. I'm just gonna smooth all this out really hard. And we're gonna add in some second, secondary meshes there around that area. It's normally the direction that I go when I'm starting from scratch. And I think this form is gonna be too annoying to work for my liking. So I'm just gonna destroy most of it. By most of it, I mean pretty much all of it. <laughs> oh, let's see. What time is it? We got plenty of time here. Plenty of time to sculpt our our second buff boy. Oh, you know what? Because we crashed, we lost all our undoes, which means I can't roll this back. Sad. But that's all right. So you can, uh, I bet, um, uh, that might not be it, for, wait, for 988, what is this, I can't tell, this might actually have the undos, but if I'm sculpting something where I want to make a time lapse, I should have done this and just saved the undos as we were sculpting, if you check that, quick save will also record your undos, so quick saves will take a long time. But I, I very rarely save as projects. I'm pretty much always saving as uh, Z tools. There's no reason to save as a project unless you're, I don't know, unless you're wanting your undos or something. There's not much, much else that you'd need to do that for. Even if you're trying to save like multiple tools in one project, it's still a smaller file if you were to save those out as separate Z tools. 
Yeah, I'm glad that we're here. I'm glad that we're doing this because this will help us be able to affect this plane a little bit better too. We'll just get this nice and cleaned up, and then we can insert some eyelids, just like we did on our last big buff boy. If you guys missed that, or if you guys want some tips for working on eyes and stuff, we're about to do that a little bit more. We're already getting into it a little bit here. We're just working on this lower plane. This whole area right around here. Actually, you know what? This whole area is always very, very difficult in general. Eyes are so important to your character and they really do. They definitely have the ability to make or break whatever you're working on. A lot of things do, but in particular the face and in particular the eyes are one of those, one of those areas. I'm already kind of focusing on eyelid order a little bit now for the depth of this face. I'll talk more about that later once we get eyelids in. That's also a very important thing to make your eyes feel natural and look appealing. Pretty much always want to follow the same rules for eyelid order. It's got this like strong plane break here that I'm thinking about not including at all. It's kind of weird. I know what they're trying to represent in 2D. I just not, I'm not sure if this will work in 3D. So you have this with your eyelids. You have quite a bit of fat out here on this outer outer lid. Just drop my pen. And we're in caps, all caps. Uh, you can kind of see it a little bit in this eye. <clears throat> Find Okay, here you go. So, this is all, you know, fat skin and everything else, but right around here, this plane of the brow starts to change. You can kind of see how this is in shadow tucked in here, and then it starts to like flip out as it goes to the outside, starts to twist, that, that this plane transitions. There's like this specific fat pad right here. And that's kind of what they're trying to capture, I think, with this plane change that they got going on. Also, this is just 2D. I mean, they're, it's probably the way that the light is hitting the illustration or the person that they drew this from. But I don't know, we'll play with it, see, see if we can capture that a little bit better. If not, uh, I think we can still still make it look good. Same, yes. So hard to to talk and sculpt or, or do anything else while you're trying to focus really hard on stuff. And this is something that definitely takes a lot of focus for me. curve going on here. We'll get that more in with the uh, the lids though. Once we get those in. Um, I guess we can, now that we've cleaned up our ears, mouth, yada yada yada, we can just like merge all that. Merge this back down. If anything I might open the mouth a little bit more so it doesn't freak out. Corners of the mouth are always real important.
So let's see. This needs to be more flat. This need this corner in general needs to be pulled down so we get that trapezoid shape that we see in the 2D reference there, which is fine. Can do that. Not a super hard shape with this character mouth, but I think from the profile it could still use a decent amount of volume. And that will probably involve pulling part of our face in here along the nose here and messing with our silhouette in general. Try to get some more depth around some of these areas. And Try to fix this super strong kind of pushed out area here, which is a little exaggerated. Quite a bit exaggerated. Alright, so this is probably... Let's see here, this is probably fine. Maybe like... Let's just try to mesh that. Sure that the corners of the lips aren't freaking out, which it looks like maybe they're merging a little bit too far in, which is fine. We can fix that, and then I'll look at the ears after I get these working nicely. Okay, so I'm gonna take this plane, really pull that nice and tight down here. Start to transition this plane, do the same thing. Alright, so it's going to look a little bit awkward at first, but once we merge that, we'll clean up this area, and I think it'll be totally fine. Expecto, what's going on? Welcome to the stream. Is there any reason for the cut when you can use masking? Uh, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of reasons for slicing off the lower jaw. One of the main ones is so that we got double on, so that's good, so that we can create a mouth bag. And I'll clean that up a little bit. But we're going to be depending on what character you're working on, but our character's mouth is open, so we need some kind of negative in that hole there. You could push that in and dynamesh it. What I like about having the mouth split though, is that you can very quickly switch between your sub tools and work on one here, and, you know, one on the other, and uh, sculpt out that mouth, mouth bag, sculpt out the thickness of the lips. It makes it very easy. Absolutely. No problem at all. Yeah, there's always a yeah, I would say a lot of uh, a lot of things that everybody does is about preference. I mean whatever is easiest for you, uh, well not not necessarily easiest, but whatever is easiest and most efficient in getting whatever you need to make, I say go for it. There's uh, only a billion ways to do every single little thing. <laughs> it's about finding what works for you, absolutely. I really enjoy getting to watch other sculptors so that I can pick up on things that they do, try them out. For the most part though, I've got my my workflow pretty much, pretty much locked in. Every once in a while when there's new tools and I spot a new technique that I really like, I'll try to incorporate that into my workflow. For the most part though, I uh... I'm an old man setting my ways. No, not really. Alright, we'll add, uh, add our eyelids on here I think, and then we'll be able to clean up a lot of this around the eyes. A lot easier than what we got right now. And 
we should be in a really good place. We've already got a lot of these major forms blocked out in a, in a good way. We can kind of continue that line there. Leave this awkward gap here because we're going to be dynameshing more geometry into the face here with the lids. So we definitely want to not um, not pull those corners any tighter yet. We'll do that after we remesh some stuff. Uh, found your stream on uh, ZBrush when you showed Shapeways. Oh yeah, awesome man. For those that don't know, I also stream on the uh, Pixelogic channel, Pixelogic ZBrush, the creators of the software that I'm using right now. Um, last Tuesday, I streamed there on, on their channel at, on uh, on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. EST, Eastern U.S. time, Eastern Standard. Um, in our last stream, we did some... Or actually, so if, if you miss anything, it goes up on their channel. So, so if you guys do want to check this out, though. Uh, in the last stream, I worked on uh, taking... Let's see. Got him close by here. I took this muffin here, this SpongeBob muffin, and showed the process for how you can set up your 3D, 3D models in ZBrush for uh, full-color sandstone 3D printing. So I have a bunch of these on my desk, and I, sh I show them off quite often, but... Uh, here's a Pikachu Totoro fusion that I made, just combine those up, had a lot of fun making this guy. Uh, and I have a lot of these, uh, a lot of these. There's actually uh, a link to my shop below if you guys want to check out some more. I'm kind of just banging these around, but uh, we got Banjo and Kazooie mixed with Angry Birds. They're a lot of fun, one of my one of my faves. Try to make some stackables or something. Uh, but yeah, I got a lot more of these if you guys are interested in at least just looking at them. Uh, there's a link down below. But yes, if you are also interested in learning that process for how you can uh, set up your prints, set up your 3D models to full color sandstone or full color SLS print them, I would highly recommend it. Had a lot of fun on stream. Got a lot of good questions, a lot of good info out. And what we're going to do for the next stream on the Pixo channel yet. I have not decided, but we'll be there again on next Tuesday. Same time. Same time, same place. Alright, so let's insert our, our eyelids here. <laughs> You're thinking about trying it now? Yeah, I mean... Might be worth a worth a shot. The way I make eyelids is actually a lot of the time very similar to how they would be sculpted traditionally. I actually learned this technique from watching traditional sculptors. Essentially what they do, and I wouldn't normally do it to this, I wouldn't wait this long to do it, but we, we started working on a, uh, on a base from yesterday, this guy, here. So we started, we sculpted this guy yesterday, and that stream is available on my YouTube channel if you guys want to check that out, but we essentially just took this head, and then started warping it and moving it until... We've gotten to these proportions here. We'll be working on that more, I think. Noticing some stuff I want to change here in the jawline. I think that jawline is starting to subduct a little bit early. So I'll definitely need to uh, pull this out a little bit. I'll do that later. Somebody remind me to do that later once we have workable geometry. Okay, let's move some lids. This is a cube tube brush. It's an insert triparts welded brush that I made. They're very nice to use. You can do, you can get a similar result with the curved tube snap 
brush by adjusting your brush modifier. If you guys know where that is, it's in the brush modifiers palette. And you can set your brush mod to four and you'll get a four sided shape, but you will get really crappy geometry and your end caps, which is why I don't use that anymore. So I made a new brush for it, which is what this is. And it's just a lot, a lot help, uh, more helpful. Now we can crease all our edges here, get a really nice shape, something easy to work with, and really get this planed out. So when you're working on eyelids, some things to keep in mind, we'll get the eyelid order in a, in a minute, I mentioned that, but you want to have this inner plane here. I think I mentioned this yesterday as well, but for those that weren't here, you always want to have that inner plane pretty much facing the center of your eyeball, if you can. So just getting this inner plane headed towards the middle of your eyeball can be really nice. So it's really steep right now, that's not the middle of our eyeball, the middle of our eyeball is somewhere, somewhere way back here. So let's grab this plane and shift it back. And the reason you do this, are for a number of reasons, it's, it, it's going to feel a lot more natural, it's also more accurate to what you would see in, a, in an actual person's lid and it creates some really nice shadows and highlights around your eyes. So we'll do the same thing with the bottom lid as well, getting that same angle. Pretty thick right now. I think I've pushed this a little too far as well, just kind of looking at how the light's playing off that. Once we get a little bit closer to what we're looking for, we'll start thinking about thick to thin and getting that all feeling good. We also got some kind of lengthier sections up here, it looks like. Kind of an, a plane change happening. Which you'll see very often in this angle. So pull it out a little bit further on the outside corner of the lower lid. Can probably subduct this top lid as well, this area, this plane, just pull this in. Start to do that some more. I'll just trim this out. Uh, I really like your style, really clean work, thank you. Thank you, Expecto. I appreciate that, man. Man, old gal. I call everybody man. Dude. Sound effects and sticking your tongue out while you sculpt. Those are the secrets, guys, to being a great artist. That's how you get real good. <laughs> All right, so I need to start changing this plane here, right about there. Put that up, down, and around. Maybe even a little bit higher there. Let's get our lower lid in and that will just help us uh, line a, a lot of this up uh, a little bit easier too. The more stuff you have referencing against itself, uh, the better off you're going to be. Uh, we still got that stupid feature. 
So you can rotate an object, obviously with your transpose line, and if you hold shift, it'll snap to I think every 22.5 degrees by default. I can't remember what the default is. You can change it though, up here in, in transpose rotation steps. So yeah, that would be 22.5 for every, yeah, four steps for every 90 degrees. Um, if you look at the definition for this, it actually says it's this number divided by 360. It's not, it's not though. It's this number divided by 90 or 90 divided by this number, sorry. So if I wanted, if I made this 10, or I'm sorry, if I made this nine rotation steps, it would snap to every 10 degrees. But anyway, when you rotate 180 degrees, boom, your geometry flips the other way. Very annoying, very dumb feature. <laughs> I'm sure there's some people that, that love it. I am not one of those people though. It just gets in the way for me. But we have a pretty good base here by just, you know, grabbing that top lid that we made that's nice and clean and having this now to push and pull around. It's very, very nice. That's why we take the time to to make a clean piece of geometry that we can reuse. This plane needs to change. Let's try to get the angles here first. And then the eye placement is gonna change by me doing that. I think eye distance is relatively close. I guess we can, once we get these in here, we can line some things back up and have a second go at that since we haven't done that since the very beginning. Normally I just kind of eyeball stuff. I think it's really good for working on your, you know, your artistic eye. And then when you're working on something that only has one single view, you start getting really good at um, being able to read, read these shapes even better, which is a, an important skill to have. As an artist, so being able to figure out what's going on in your reference. It's not an easy thing, always. Ah, uh, see. Wonder, Wonder Beast, Wonder White. Thank you for the follow, and welcome to the stream. Hello! Hannibal's back. All transpose, no gizmo. Dude, F the gizmo. No, I don't, I don't really use the gizmo. The only time I use, I love the transpose. I've been using ZBrush for, bef you know, since before the gizmo, so I'm very used to using the transpose. There's also a lot of secret functionality that not a, a lot of people know about that you can do with like inflating and clipping with the transpose line. Some little secret hotkeys, I'm not telling. I'll tell if you, if you really care, but uh, the only time I use the gizmo is uh, when I'm using a deformer, because that's the only way you can access them. And I will look at chat in just a moment here, see that there's some new peeps hanging out. Welcome everybody though. Hope you're having a good Friday. Woo, finally. I don't know, this week went actually pretty fast for me. I don't know about you guys. I don't know what you guys got going on. Uh, let's see. Sorry, it looks like I missed quite a bit. Um, oh, Hannibal, I'm so sorry, man. Uh, your, the stream is lagging on your end. Oh, man, that happened last time, too. I'm, I'm really sorry, I don't know what's what's going on there. I'm getting like 5,000 kilobits per second upload though right now, so that's really, really fast on my side at least. Maybe it's, maybe there's something weird going on with the uh, ad block or I don't know. I doubt anything weird is going on with your firewall. I don't know where, where you live. Maybe do a speed test or something. <laughs> I'll, I'll ask questions for you. <laughs> uh, let's see. 
Oh, uh, Hannibal. Oh, no, you're asking... That's so funny. You joined in right as we were making eyelids on, uh... Our eyelashes and eyelids on this guy. And now we're doing the same thing. And you never got your question answered. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, do you, Gliffy asks, do you attend any conferences regularly? Uh, nope. No, not really. I... I have a very uh, strong opinion about conferences. I think they're they're kind of useless in general. I think they're good for networking ever so slightly, and they're very good for inspiration. But that's really about it. I don't I don't really get a lot out of conferences. I'm, I'm not really super interested in in inspiration. I'm a very self motivated person. I just, you know, I don't, I don't personally get a lot out of conferences, so I tend not to, to get to too many, uh, even if I have the opportunity. The uh, only conference that I care about going to is the ZBrush Summit. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that by next year we'll be able to, we'll be able to work something out and come visit. I'm all the way over in Cincinnati though, so it's a pretty far trip. Not super easy for me to get all the way out there. But would, I think it would be awesome. I would love to. Uh, Chig, welcome back. Welcome back to the stream, man. How's your Friday going? Uh, and Benbo says, been watching your videos for a while. Cool to catch you live. Awesome, man. Welcome to the stream. Glad to have you here. Forgive my rudeness, and hello again. <laughs> You're fine, man. Uh, oh, it's on your phone. Well, that might be why, I think. Uh, so, I'm actually, I know very little about Twitch, but maybe you guys, maybe some people here know. Uh, so I'm streaming in 60 FPS, I believe, right now, 1080p. If you, you might be able to lower that setting. I'm not sure if you can on your phone. Does anybody know? I'm sure, I'm sure somebody knows in chat, but you might be able to lower that setting somewhere and make it a little bit more bearable. Your phone might not be able to encode fast enough for the uh, 60 FPS 1080p. I would assume it's similar to YouTube where you can lower the settings or there's some auto mode. I don't know if that'll help at all though be a completely different problem. So we're getting kind of wavy, kind of warbly around here. We don't like that. I think from the profile, I still want to get this kind of big change, push that in. We have some good depth starting to go on here in the face, but let's Continue to work on these eyes. Get that feeling a lot better. So, I'll talk about eyelid order because it's causing a significant issue right now. Uh, that is, I think, very obvious. You guys should be able to catch it. But eyes feel, they feel okay from the front, right? But as we start to rotate around, things look start to look like really bug-eyed, very awkward. And that's because eyelid order is super important. So if we're looking at our character from the side view, you want to turn off perspective. Draw out your transpose line. This is an easy way to kind of figure out what's hitting first. So the first hit that we should always have is the top eyelid. And you can see that that's kind of even with our lower eyelid. So we need to bring that out further. Should always go top eyelid, bottom eyelid, inner corner, outer corner. Should pretty much always be the case. If it's not, your eyes are probably too fat or too flat, or um, or uh, awkwardly like angled the wrong way, like angled like this. Your brow comes out more forward and should create these uh, this this transition here. So we'll we'll start to get that in now. Got a very thin thin lid here. I think. Let's move this eye back into the head. Start to go up a little bit, and maybe even increase the size here of our eyeball. 
got some pretty big eyes. You know what? Actually, we'll 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 keep that where it was. I think we're we're not too far off in terms of size. Okay, so now it's getting there. It's getting closer. Let's just group that forward some more. His eyes are very wide open. Got pretty, pretty round shape here. Pretty uniform, I would say, on that curve. Still more open on the inner corner, which is good. We like that. It's always an appealing shape. This uh, angle of that lid needs to change. This here. Start to get like this really dark shadow in there. So now we're starting we're starting to get that a little bit more, that one, two between the top and bottom. Can try to push that a little bit further. Your eye sits a little bit higher up in the socket than you probably think it does typically. His eyeball. There, it's like feeling pretty smack dab in the middle. So what we'll probably do is rotate this out. And this gets pretty thin as well. It gets very thin actually, down through here. Got some cool shapes going on though, I like it. Don't think it's possible to lower the quality unless the streamer is at a certain tier of Twitch partnership. What, really? That's weird. That, what, is that like a, there's no way that's like a resource intensive feature. That's strange. Maybe it is, I don't know. That's very weird. Hmm. Very strange, I did not know. I did not know that. We always want this nice kind of internal silhouette line coming down from the eyelid cheek and rounding out for the nasolabial fold. So we'll be working on getting some of that. A lot of what we got going on here is going to be a lot nicer after we blend these together. So let's see. Let's maybe just try getting a slight bit of rotate here. Like just open up these eyes some more. It's like a much steeper plane change that I'm seeing going on here. on the stream coming through the source, otherwise they have to re-encode the stream in real time as it goes through the pipes. I see. Yes, because it is live, I guess. It's not something like YouTube. I actually don't know if I've never checked in YouTube streaming if you can uh, lower the settings, but when it's something that's uploaded it makes sense that you would be able to on the fly. Pop that resolution a little bit lower. I 
the more you know. Let's see. I think... I think... I think we're good here on these eyes for a little bit. Pretty close in shape. So we are... Um, we, still, we just have this really low resolution geometry here. I'm just smoothing out that with the D key. It's a kind of a fake subdiv level. I'm going to add some real subdivs though. Because we're going to merge these down in a little bit. We can jump around on our head. Uh, just looking at some different areas, maybe. If there's anything else we want to clean up before we start merging all this together. We can turn on perspective. I think, I think we're in a good place to start to do that. There might be some plane changes I try to work out here. Just to get that to line up a little nicer. This is always a tough area, too right here, coming around the cheekbone and everything else. Start to figure out that transition. Get this nice shape though. I think we're also getting a decent curve now. Before it was pretty strong, now I, I feel like it's a lot nicer. I still have these really hard like these super sharp lines in here, they're they're pretty sharp in here, but you know we're gonna we're gonna clean those up too. So they're not gonna be nearly this this hard. The one area I think I'm going to also fix is I think gonna be in here. Got that real tight line. I think we'll just kind of blend that out, trim it up. So the cheekbone, cheekbone is pretty much always the widest part of your face. It's also an important piece of info to keep in mind. Here, it's kind of a, if anything, I would say it, it's a little bit, it's actually a little bit less, but so we can, we can kind of get some of that. I had that actually pretty close. I think I'm just going to kind of keep that line squared off from the front view and uh, maybe start to trim that back a little bit more here. But I think that's a pretty good shape that we got going on. Let's see, what are we doing on time? I got, I don't even remember what time I set my alarm for now. If I even set my alarm this time, I did, okay. So we have a little over an hour, which is awesome. So I think we'll have plenty of time to clean this up, get this all merged here, and starting to head in a really good direction. Up here, I think I'm fine with this. I say we go ahead and start merging down some eyelids. Cool. Start Stop noodling here, and we'll just merge down, and we'll dynamesh all this together. I might increase the resolution, though. We'll see what this does here. Oh, it's already done. <laughs> One thing... A thing that I did on my last character that I think I'm actually going to do on this one too is I deleted the areas behind the eyes and also behind the mouth. It ended up actually helping uh, with the auto topology remeshing so that it would help create an edge loop in that area, which was very nice. I think, uh, I guess we could also get a, a little bit of, the. I guess the question is, do we want to include the very long neck and um, um, trapezius muscles and a little bit of the shoulder girdle there? I guess we can, we can also play with this shape is too long, which would be easier to adjust after remeshing. So, 
I guess, I guess we can do it. I'll just very quickly, let's take this. Um, let's go to movie timeline. We'll turn this back on. This went away because we crashed earlier. So I'll line this up, line it back up. That's where we had it before. Let's see, turn off the line. This will be a little bit easier now. There's also a couple things that we can maybe change here. I think we can open up the top lid a little bit more. For the most part, we're, we're pretty close. The So this is, I mean, it's asymmetric, so I, we're keeping this symmetrical for a while here. But I would like to now, let's just duplicate and get in a piece of geometry for this area here. for a second. Let's just do insert sphere really quick. I'm just taking this sphere, pulling it out, stretching it. just to find these planes a little bit better than what we got so far. Doesn't need to be anything super specific, just kind of getting that basic shape I think is going to be enough here. Yes, I'll just probably I'll probably just like remesh this super low really fast or actually yeah we'll here let me do this I'll do like a slight bit of cleanup to this and then merge it into the bod or the neck And I obviously don't have a, uh, a side view to go off of here, so I'm just kind of, from my experience, what I know about this area and the angles that I want. In <laughs> Oh man, engine, uh, en engine! Why'd you gamble away all your poly count, man? Why'd you do that? What were you thinking? Oh no. Uh. Let's see. <laughs> How am I displaying the uh, the image? This it's spotlight. Uh, you can import. Uh, I moved it a little bit. That's okay. Uh, you can import images through texture, uh, import, and then after you have an image that you want, uh, you just select your image and then click on um, add to spotlight right here. I have a tutorial uh, on my YouTube channel if you guys want to figure out how to use spotlight because there's kind of a lot of different stuff going on here and just figuring out the hotkeys and show hide, activate the tool, all that which I won't go into right at this second. That, that all is also included in my How To ZBrush Quick Start Guide. So I think the Spotlight tool is really 
useful for a lot of different things, not just references. It's pretty cool though. I like it a lot. All right, so let's merge these together. Um, he doesn't really have like a notch there or anything, does he? So I guess we'll just dynamesh giraffe neck here and uh, keep going. I might do some like some kind of plane break back here to get this shape blending and feeling more natural. Even though he does have a stupid long neck. It's a cool character though, I like this a lot. Hence why I'm, I guess, sculpting it. But also, I thought it'd be fun to do today. I also said that I think we would pick the witch back up next week. We ended up working on it for maybe half an hour at the beginning of this stream. So she's coming along too. She's she's really close, I think, to to me being done with her. I'm kind of kind of done with it, just mentally. Kind of want to work on other stuff. And I think uh, doing these like little head projects is a lot of fun. Like this guy, I think we spent a couple days on him, or actually we started that towards about halfway on the first stream and then we finished it off for the second one, but I a good amount of time working on this guy today, which is awesome. Um, Alright, I guess let's remesh, if anything, starting to blend out some of this, some of this. Start to transition some of this area. Also, obviously we're gonna have to do a lot of asymmetry stuff here too, if we look at our face. A lot of asymmetry, cool expression going on. I like it a lot. So we're gonna have to get to a place where we can manipulate this in such a way where it's easy to make these large changes and we'll get there we'll get there we just need to continue cleaning this bad boy up Macelle what's going on thanks for the follow how you doing how's the the Friday grind or I guess the Friday grind is probably over for a lot of you depending on what time zone you're in. You guys are already living in weekend land. Oh, by the way, I have not edited or changed my schedule yet, but I will not be, uh, I will unfortunately not be streaming tomorrow morning. I will be uh, helping my friend move. He's moving into a new apart apartment, somewhat close by. I think he's maybe like 20 or 30 minutes away, not too far. But uh, I'll be helping him move all day tomorrow. So I will not have the chance to jump on here. Hard shadow right there. Dumb, dumb shape. All right. So what can I do here before remeshing? Can I make some any big changes that I want to do before I do that? I guess maybe like or how do I how do I want to cut this?
I wonder, huh, I wonder why that's going so slow. I, I wonder if the slice curve, I don't normally make the curve length that long. I wonder if that affects it at all. So I'm going to be deleting the end cap off of that. That's not good. I need to fix that. Oh, I had, um, I, I know what I did wrong. We had perspective on. That's my bad. That's probably why it was freaking out, taking so long to calculate. That'll be better. No perspective, it'll cut straight through to the other side. We'll keep symmetry. So all these like weird little silhouette hits that are super unnecessary. Those will whoa crap, <laughs> not what I wanted. Those will go away after we remesh and have something a little bit easier to to work with. I think my ears could go a little bit lower too. Just a tad. I haven't looked at my nose shape in a minute. And I actually don't think it's super far off. Alright, so remeshing. What do we want to do for remeshing? So we can use our polygroups to inform a lot of uh, changes that are going to happen. In, uh, in our character, but I think for the most part what I'm going to do is just put a polygroup in the mouth area uh, for the corners of the mouth, and then cut holes in other areas to make Ziri Mesher understand how I want the topology to flow. Namely, I'm going to put a hole here in the eyes, I'm also going to put one in the mouth, and that should help us out a lot. And I'll actually show you a cool trick to get rid of all this jagged geo before we remesh, because sometimes the remesher sees this stuff and freaks out a little bit, which can be very annoying. I'll leave a little bit of extra room there, and then I'm just going to delete all of that, delete hidden. And we'll do the mouth bag too. Cause this thing, this is an ugly mouth bag. I don't know what happened here. Got out of control. Alright, so I think I'm just gonna grab all that. Delete hidden. And Let's see, what's that look like now? It's not too bad. It's always super trippy when you're looking at the inverse of a face. It's like the shadows and it starts to make you really dizzy, feel really weird. It makes it feel like it's coming towards you and the light is coming from the bottom. If I move the light to the actual bottom, It'll feel like this is an actual face now. Now it feels really weird, but yeah, it's very trippy. Very trippy feeling. Ancient, welcome back, man. Uh, have you finished The Witch or are you doing some side works? Uh, the Witch is pretty much done. We can load her up since we got a second here. Our spooky October witch. But yeah, for the past couple days we've been doing just a few few little side things. So here's our witch. Uh, right before I shifted to what we're doing now, 
we did uh, a little extra stuff to the hands and a little extra work to uh, the expression. I'm gonna really quickly, or no, I'm not gonna mess with that. So there's our witch, for those that have not seen. And here's another little uh, side character that we did yesterday. Really quick, rough hair, super quick, rough hair. Quick, rough uh, poly paint. He was a lot of fun though. And then we took this face and we've started converting it into, uh, into this guy here. But yeah, he's coming along nicely. Starting to look pretty cool. Pretty close proportionally, I think. But once we start getting into uh, asymmetry and all that, it'll be a lot easier to uh, do some stuff. So I am going to take that mouth and slice it at the corners. So I want this any any tight area like this is very very annoying to deal with when remeshing. So I will I can pull that all the way through. I think I will do that. I think this is what I did on the last guy, just for a quick quick remesh. And I could create an edge loop around the eyes and around the ears and everything else. I'm just going to try this first. We'll see how it goes. If it looks like crap, we'll do some modifications here. Looks awesome. Uh, I remember that one also looks really good. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. What are you up to today, Ancient? <sighs> We're waiting on a Z-Remesh. Z-Remesh with uh, and anytime you're going from something super high like this to some low res topology and you have poly groups, at least to take it sweet time. Let's see. So, it looks like we almost, oh, you know, I forgot to do the, I forgot to do the thing. You guys didn't rem remind me to do the thing. Um, I'm gonna clean up all the jagged stuff in here by using edge loop group loops. And I'm just gonna set this to one. This should work. I don't know why the default is four. I feel like that's a lot. But this will essentially go through these open areas with these default settings, and it should round out and clean this area up enough to enough to so on Z remesh that'll work out a lot better. But with that, it also creates some um, new uh, new poly groups, so you can see those here. There's also one down here for the mouth. I'm gonna just polygroup everything, redo this cut line back here. You can actually see very faintly our old cut line from where we merged that together earlier. It's all right. Probably just remove that corner. It's probably gonna cause issues. Oops. Polygroup that real quick. Let me look at this corner. Sure. 
All right, let's, uh, let's maybe try this one more time. If the eyes are still freaking out on us, we can create an edge up there, and it should be totally fine. I don't think it's... Well, I don't know. It's not like it's, it's going to hurt anything. But it might. Oh, I don't know. Never know until you try it with what you got. Zero meshers, all sorts of finicky. See how that does. Uh, you're gonna start on doing those 20 hour long guide tutorials on making a stylized character game ready. And to get hyped, I'm watching you. <laughs> yes, welcome to my uh, stream that is titled ZBrush and Chill. We're getting very hype here. <laughs> Glad to have you here, either way, whether, whether we're getting hype or not. Wow. That worked really well through there. Holy crap. The heck, ZBrush? When do you make that clean? Of course. Of course, you make my eyes super clean, but you give me a star right here in the freaking corner of the mouth. The one area that I care about more than the eyes. I wonder... I wonder if I can do something here. I'm trying to think how I would... How I would do this. So I'm trying to shift a, the star away from the corner of the mouth here. No, this is not going to work. This is going to be exactly the same. Uh, let's try. Let me see here. The hell ZBrush. You give me the best eyes I've ever seen you remash. And then you give me that freaking mouth. Are you kidding me? So we'll just smooth this out. ZBrush doesn't like tight for Z remesher. Actually, I'm sure it's that's this stupid corner area back here that's not helping. These polys get super tight back here. Let's just try that now. Oh, ZBrush. ZBrush, ZBrush, ZPlane, ZPlane. All right, fingers crossed. If anything, I'll just add like an extra thousand polygons and that will probably make that a lot, a lot better as well. Katie! Katie, what's going on? Welcome! Normally you're here bright and early for the party. Coming in late today. How's the uh, concepting going? What the f is this? Alright, let's add some more polys in here. <laughs> how are the... Uh, 
how are the Disney style sketches coming along? I know that you were working on some of those before. The more polys we add, the longer it will take. I just wanted to get a little, what are you doing now? You were doing so good on the eyes. No, brush. you don't create sm spirals anymore. You're not supposed to create spirals anymore. Alright, let's try. What else do I want to try? I'm going to duplicate this. Smooth out this corner. Smooth out this. I don't want it to freak out over these transitional areas at all. Oh, what is this I see? This little thing. Is that on the other side? Alright. Um, okay. Here, we'll do this. We got some little pinching going on. So I will run a Dynamesh. That'll give us all new topology. Still at this high res. It'll also close holes. So to fix that, I'll just select one of those poly groups where it closed. And I'll inverse and delete all of that. Now it'll me to fix this stupid little bump there that we were getting and then I can rerun the edge loop group loops function which will give us clean uh, clean holes clean holes clean your hole <laughs> oh man um, did a small sketch today, just polished it up on the, the Whips Discord. Awesome. Oh, I did see I did see one that you posted where you said that you hated doing hair. Looking good. At least this is easier to select now, I guess. I don't really care about where this line goes. Doesn't matter. Alright. So we fixed that little corner problem. I don't know if the lips will still be freaking out. I guess we'll we'll see. You managed to do the hair, then uh, vetoed on adding color. But everything looks better in color. Everything. Ooh. Now it's starting to like get cold again in my room. Temperature this morning was like frigid. And I didn't have my heat on last night and it got down to freezing. Holy butt. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna treat the uh, the lips in the same way that we did the eyes. So 
this is the same same basic uh, idea, same little trick here to force ZBrush to follow this edge loop and also add more polygons here because for some reason it really doesn't want to and I don't know why it's fighting it so hard just in this specific area. So I'm just telling ZBrush by making these little groups here, follow this edge with your topology. And my resolution just might be too low as well, which might be the main issue. It's a good idea to keep the room cold if you sit down a lot to burn extra calories. <laughs> That's pretty good. I haven't heard that one. I haven't heard that one before. I uh, yeah, I've, I sit down all all day. I'm just right here sculpting away. What the is that? Why you do this? Why you do this, ZBrush? Why do you hate me? All right, screw it all. Give me something new here. We'll try it without the poly groups on the mouth. It'll go a little bit faster too. I'll use this quick second uh, to shout out the new thing that I, or is my, here. Uh, some people were asking on my Instagram uh, uh, after I uploaded these, uh, if I could throw these up on my Gumroad. It's just five base mesh uh, mannequins for, they're all pretty high res, so there's five of these, but uh, I just threw them all up on here late last night. You can grab all five of these for just a dollar if you're interested. Uh, some pretty different body types. And yeah, they're, they're just pretty good bases split up into different meshes, similar to how I always block out my characters. Um, this, this guy was a lot of fun to make, but yeah, if you guys are interested in those, Gumroad.com slash polygon, you can grab them for just a buck. A buck rooney What the fuck? <laughs> ZBrush, what are you doing in here? What is... The shape is fine. I don't know why it's... Why it's freaking out. I guess we can just close holes in the mouth. It's not like I need that area to have an open hole. The reason I gave it an open cavity though was so that it would calculate better with Z remesh, but it's not. So I guess we'll just close it off. Seal all the holes. I'm just gonna delete or I, am I doing this wrong? Yes, I am. So I don't want the eye. Oh, I did that wrong. I did do that wrong. Um, there we go. So I just want the mouth closed off. Oh, ZBrush. Like I said, it's always different. It was actually a lot more smooth on the other head that we did. A lot more smooth. This one's just playing hardball. And the whole reason I'm doing this, it's not, I'm just doing all this work so that I can get a decent uh, remesh on the topology. Like I don't have to do that. I can probably work the mesh at this stage and just Z remesh it, get some crappy, crappy topology flow and just have a low res mesh, and that's totally fine. That's totally doable, but I would prefer to have something a little bit more clean like this so that we get some nice edge loops around the eyes. It really helps when you're trying to get some of these tighter edges in certain areas, like around the lips. Like edge loops around the lips are very helpful. But, I don't know. We don't necessarily have to do that. 
I just want to get to a point where I can change this proportionally from the profile. So there's some major things that I want to do here, like pushing in them, pushing in quite a bit of some stuff here. All right, let's see. Try this again. And if this doesn't work this time, we'll try it at 1K and then maybe a little bit higher as if that doesn't work, I'll just say F it and we'll we'll do what we can. We'll use the topology that gets gets got. Uh, what is the curve for Z remesher set to? I don't know. It's probably just the default. Uh, if it's anything below 75, you get some wonky results. Let's see. Whoops. The curve strength is 50, just the default value. See, now we're actually we're actually okay though. We're actually getting what I wanted. I don't know why it was being so dumb before. We do have one stupid uh, quad break here in that edge loop. So we don't get that nice edge loop there. I think that that should be fine though. Do end up with a little bit of star on the corner of the lid. So I think the only thing that I will do now is increase this res. And it should. I normally leave both of these at the the same value. Well, the adaptive is um, you know it's pretty dependent on what setting you're using here. Most people just keep it on adaptive when they're using this. You can also you know cut your mesh in half, keep it at the same, double its res, or just leave adapt on, and it'll try to adapt based on what value you're setting here. I don't normally mess with the curve. Uh, low value, track the topology edges towards the curves, which is kind of what I want. Uh, so the fewer curves you should draw if you're using the uh, topology brush, it looks like, with this. I don't really use the topology brush though. Alright, we'll try, try like two or three times higher. Last one, I promise. If it's bad, we'll just we'll roll with the punches. Probably. Unless it's just absolutely garbage and it explodes. I don't know if you guys saw <laughs> where to go. Um, if you guys were here yesterday, you got to see this beauty as he exploded. That was a lot of fun. Still have a star in the eye, don't I? Oh boy, all right. We will stick with what we got here. Subdivide, get a projection going. The main thing is that we just get something that's actually able to be manipulated and too high poly and I can't I can't work with it I can't make the big changes that I want to make all right cool all that all that for not much reward. That's okay. We'll make it work. We'll have some little lashes in here that'll help, you know, make this fit a little bit better. But okay, we got something workable. Let's go through and clean up all the areas that, that really need it. There are a lot of areas that really need it. <laughs> I 
What's going on, new peeps? Welcome to the stream. Hope you guys are having a good Friday. We are... We've come at the right time. We've gotten past a lot of the... Uh, well, maybe you didn't come at the right time, I guess, depending on what you want to see. But we have taken this head that we made just yesterday. The whole process for this is on my YouTube channel, if you guys still want to see that. But we've taken him and we've we've started pushing him further into uh, this the, the territory of this character. And we're just now getting to a point where we, we got some more workable topology. And we can start playing with this a little bit more and getting some good stuff. This is kind of one of the big changes that I want to make here. A lot of this is feeling right around here a little bit too, too thick. Let's see. That's feeling a little bit better to me. Just making sure that we're not losing a lot of the depth in the face. I was showing an example earlier. I'll show it again here really fast of somebody that sculpted another one of these characters by Miji Lee. Um, I think I found it on, I don't, do you guys remember where I found it? On the front page or? I think I just searched her name really quick. So this is who made the concept that I'm going off of right now. I'll do a quick search. Search projects and most recent, this one. So, uh, and I'm, I'm demonstrating this not to call this person out, I'll say this again, but just to illustrate uh, how important depth in the face is. Uh, this sculpt looks really great from this angle. I think they captured a lot of the uh, the character and appealing shapes in here really well. It looks looks clean, looks good. I would definitely give Maria a follow. Um, but as we rotate around to the side here, we start to lose a lot of that depth. And uh, it starts to get into a really unappealing territory. So while you're working on, on your characters, just make sure that we're, you know, we're, we are 3D artists, so we got the front view. And if you only have one view to work off of, that's that's great. It's, uh, it's gonna be a lot harder on you. But we do have to focus on, you know, getting some nice clean silhouette, making sure that we're getting from our three-quarter view some nice depth going on, profile, all that jazz. Can't uh, can't forget about those other views. But again, not to call that person out, but just to just to illustrate how important that stuff can be. It looks great from the front, not so great from the side, and that's that's. That's important too. So like in this dude here, I think we got we got a lot of cool shapes going on, and I think he really actually shines a lot in the silhouette. Just because he has like this really like like coming down from the forehead all the way to the nose, very planar. And then uh, we got some nice kind of break up in the lip area as well. Silhouette wise, he's got some some nice stuff going on with these giant cheekbones. Very mean, angry boy. Nice and clean. That's kind of where we're where we're headed here with this guy. Uh, Hannibal asks, "How do you get such a clean planar sculpt uh, with the planar brush?" No, I don't use the planar brush at all. I hate the planar brush. It's uh, way too strong. Uh, man, these dogs are going crazy outside. My neighbor's dogs are always crazy. But uh, yeah, man, it's it's really just practice. Um, a lot of a lot and lot of practice, and with that comes the ability to control your form more and more. And uh, you'll be able to to clean this stuff up just just like I am. Uh, I'm not using um, you know any specific brush to to make these. I'm using a combination of uh, a few different brushes down here. These are all my brushes. For the most part though, I pretty much use the clay tubes, the trim dynamic, and the move brush. And that's pretty much how I've done all of this here. I sometimes use the pinch brush as well for tightening up areas. And uh, 
I'm not saying you should use these brushes. I'm not saying you shouldn't use these brushes. I'm just saying this is what I use and I control the form with, uh, but they don't help me control the form. You know, I have to just know what tool to use and when to use it, and that, that's just something that comes with mileage. It's really, uh, I, I joke on the, uh, the, um, on my stream page for the Pixelogic channel, they ask, what is your favorite tool? And I jokingly responded <laughs> and said that, uh, you can look at, it's, it's on, uh, we go here. Scroll down. Right here is my Pixelogic stream schedule and some info about me. But they said, what is your most used slash favorite feature? Definitely the secret easy button. So there, there is no, you know, there's no like tool that's go going to create clean shapes for you. There are some brushes that will, you know, help you do that. But it's just a matter of figuring out what those are for you. It's not going to be the same for everybody else. Somebody else, somebody was asking about uh, just a little bit ago about why I split the lower portion of the jaw off for the mouth. Why do I do that when I'm sculpting? Uh, it's just, you know, the way I've kind of done it from practice and figuring out what works for me. And, you know, that's not how they did it, but they said that they would try it, uh, which is cool. Always good, I think, to be open-minded, willing to try some new techniques. And uh, I don't know if it'll work for them. Uh, who knows? But it works well for me. It allows me to do a lot of a lot of cool stuff, nice and easily. But yeah, man. I don't know. Figure out figure out what those what those things are for you, and just you know, if you're not feeling it yet, if you're not there yet, it's just a matter of time. If I can do it, anybody can do it. I wish I had some stats on like how many hours I've actually sculpted. Because the question I get all the time is, how long have you been sculpting? And a length of time is a very bad indicator of that. If you say like one year, but that one year could be a lot different for a lot of different people. It could be one year spent sculpting or doing something, you know, once a day. Uh, like once a day for every week, so that's 52 days a year, right? Or it could be every day in a week, which would be 365 days. Like that, I feel like a time frame is a very bad indicator of like how much time somebody's put in. And that's why I don't like typically answering questions about like how long have you been sculpting? Because I don't want people to feel like, oh, well he's been doing this not even as long as I have, and he's better than me, or he's, you know, I, I don't want, I don't want any information to be indicated from that. I think it's a bad indicator of, of anything useful. This stupid line, why is this so fat? There we go. This too. All this. So ugly. Guess we could turn on perspective while we continue on here. Need to open up the eyes more. Uh, Z brush and chill, yes. It's uh what we always do, isn't it? Welcome, uh, welcome, Keg. Let's see. Kegriere. That's a fancy name. Sounds like Perrier, the drink. But I know from experience that I mispronounce everybody's name. 
uh, happy because uh, Loesch liked one of my sketches. <laughs> That's awesome. Congrats. Good for you. I, uh, I never check who likes my stuff until, uh, like, I'll do it every once in a while. I don't, I try not to look at that stuff. I, mean, I think it's bad to get caught up in some of that. But, uh, it's always really cool when you get something like that, I think, isn't it? The Loish? 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 I don't actually know how to say that one either. I always thought it was Loish. Loish? Loish? Something. Doesn't matter, I guess. I know who you're talking about. And because of our poopy topology up here, I'm gonna have to do some extra work to clean up our eyelids. Always better to get this working in the flow of the topology, if you can. But, this is so... This is nasty, nasty stuff up here. At least I can manipulate it, and it's starting to get cleaner. Got these. What you got going on here, dude? What's what is this representing? I guess just a transition from the neck to the traps on the outside. Alright, so eyebrows, eyelashes really help characters come alive. It's gonna help these eyes feel a lot better and help the character feel a lot more on character. Hair will also do that because the silhouette is just so different right now with him being a bald boy. Hair will also help us figure out some proportional changes that we might need to make. So let's get in here and do some uh, lashes and eyebrows. That's a nice, uh, sharp change there. Uh, I'm gonna steal the lashes from our last guy. We only have a top edge though, so we'll delete all this. And I think only take this here. up. I'm going to turn the poly paint off so I can see what I'm actually doing here. It's very hard to work with a uh, black mesh. Are these asymmetrical? What's going on here? Yes, they are. Not anymore. Alright, so I'm going to line this uh, edge loop up with my, uh, where my eyeball and eyelid meet. And then I'll add some thickness to this, make sure that it's curving properly, make sure that we're fitting this shape nicely. It's pretty thin, I think. And it looks like it's, uh, it maybe gets a little bit thicker out towards the end, which is pretty standard for this type of thing. manipulating some points around and we can also add some pupils to our eyes that'll help make some more sense of what's going on in there And I think the 
this lower eyelid. Yeah, this star is being very annoying. But I think this lower eyelid could maybe get pushed in some more, thin out. I need to learn how to do hair. Well, stick around. Now, we're probably just gonna do what we did for our last guy and uh, block out some hair. But uh, for our witch character, uh, if you go back and watch some of the videos for this, those are all on my YouTube channel. There's a link for that below somewhere. I think uh, specifically the one where I created these pigtails, which was towards the end. I think learning how to create these would be very helpful for you if you're trying to figure out how to create uh, geometric hair. If you're talking about maybe a different style with hair cards or uh, some planar planer hair cards or something like that, that'll be a little bit different. Uh, but I would check that one out if you're looking for some more stuff with hair. Yeah, I don't have a I don't have a command set up for for any links or anything. I don't think I have really any command set up. Uh, but yes, there is a link below, and you're very welcome. Hopefully, uh, it helps you out. Need to learn to do hair cards properly. Can never get it right. Yeah, I don't really do hair cards too often anything. I'm a geometric production boy. But I don't know, I don't... I think uh, there's a lot of tools out there that really make a lot of that process uh, quite a bit easier. If you, if you own the correct software, that is. ZBrush is not... not what I would recommend for doing hair cards. I know Max has more than a few really cool plugins for for hair. Honestly, 3ds Max gets all the f awesome plugins. Mine never gets anything good. <laughs> Probably because Max is, I don't know, super old, and everybody, all the, all the old schoolers, use it. I don't know why it gets gets all the the nice plugins. Not that I even care. This is getting really dirty through here and just stretched in general. So I'm trying to figure out exactly what I want to do here. We shall add some thickness to our lashes. So get some thick to thin now. So we get in towards that inner corner. That's all right. It quick saved, so we'll get that recovered tool, and then we'll get back in there and fix our eyes up. Uh, I'm subscribed now. Awesome. Thank you, man. Uh, 
uh, you can link ZBrush to Steam and then run the program through it, but I have... Oh, um, run ZBrush through Steam so that I could get an hour count? I see. Uh, like hours opened or something, like it does for games. That's not a bad idea. I, I, I also your uh, quick saves are uh, somewhat of an indicator. Thank you, uh, Cat Cag, for the uh, for the follow there. Cag Cagri Cag Cagrier Pierre. <laughs> um, your your uh, quick save numbers are somewhat an indicator of of how long you've been using ZBrush as well. I don't know, um, it, it also depends what your quicksave settings are, but I, I, I don't know if this number actually starts on like one or not, but I'm at, uh, I'm getting up to almost 4,200 here, or 42,000. I don't know if that number indicates anything though, because I've never, I've only used ZBrush on one other machine, and I don't remember what my count was on that. And also, after my computer got fried, this number also reset. So I've I've been reset twice on my quick save, quick save numbers. And I would assume that they roll back all the way around once they get all the way to the top. We can also add some poly paint to this if we want. Which might be cool. Let's do our eyes here. Let's fill those in. And what's nice about using the point sphere is that you can just click on that vert and draw out your pupil. Make that as big or as small as you want. We'll adjust our eyes here in a moment. Let me grab my image, my reference image. All right, and we will, let's see. Rotate out a bit more. And I guess, get a little too bug-eyed for my liking. So I think let's do let's push in here. Slide on out a little bit. Scale up. Your eyes, I, I talked about this quite a bit during our last stream, but your eyes, you know, are not looking straight forward. Uh, if they are, you're going to look very cross-eyed, so um, your eyes are looking out from each other quite a bit more than you probably think they are. If you start to look at an object and pull that closer, you know, your eyes will start to go more, more directly facing forward. Hmm, I could also, let's see, let's grab this eye corner here, and I'll just Rotate in some. Maybe a little bit too much. I'm going to be opening up the eyes more here in a moment, so that'll help with this. Another reason why using uh, poly paint can be very helpful, it helps you figure out proportions. little black like pupil iris combo that I made is also uh, pretty pretty large compared to what is going on there so I'll probably make that a little bit smaller and once we get into asymmetry well the eyes are actually pretty close this one's open a little bit more I think just with the brow up it's a 
at least the read that I'm getting currently. Let's get this looking a little bit better from the side. You're from Turkey and your name is, uh, you, you have a lot of extra, extra little doodads on your letters that we just don't have in our language, so I don't know how, uh, how the pronunciation of those consonants works, but, uh, kegen er or Kegrier. I don't know if I'm saying that correct at all, but I'm sure someone, someone understands, someone out there. Oh. See you next time. Bouncing out, not a problem. Uh, my alarm just went off actually, which means I also need to to get out of here. And I actually think this is a really good place for us to stop, as we've just painted up our eyes, put in some eyelashes. They're not they're not perfect by any means. We got some more work that we can do on a lot of different things, mouth and everything else. But we have uh, plenty of time to do that in the future. So let me save this out. Our buff boy. Buff boy head two. Uh, so let's see. Oh, I don't have any of the other things loaded in. That's not a problem. Uh, let me look here and get a quick silhouette. Not too bad. Maybe I think we could get some more depth on the eyes which would be good. We'll play with that next time now. And we'll probably be looking more at our witch in the future as well, uh, which I'm sure at least a few of you have seen. But yeah, guys, thank you for coming and hanging out. It's been a lot of fun. Hopefully you learned something new and uh, I'll be streaming. Oh, so I won't be here tomorrow. I'll be gone tomorrow. I'm gonna be helping uh, a buddy of mine move into his apartment, a new apartment. Uh, so that's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, uh, I will be streaming all next week, uh, schedule's down below, and uh, I'll be streaming Tuesday on the Pixelogic ZBrush channel, creators of this software, I'll be streaming on their Twitch and YouTube channel and Facebook um, at 6pm EST on Tuesday, this Tuesday, on all Tuesdays, uh, for the foreseeable future. Uh, and then I'll just shout out at the end here my Gumroad, where uh, there's some courses on there if you guys are interested in uh, learning some stuff from me. Um, Real-time footage, all voiceover uh, through all the courses. Uh, quick start guide if you guys know nothing about digital sculpting or ZBrush and you want to get into it. Uh, and then uh, I got a new base mesh that I uploaded and then I also uploaded these late last night if you guys are interested in grabbing a few sculptural mannequins that you can use as bases for for your characters, I uploaded five of these and you can get all five of them for only a dollar. So uh, I wouldn't have normally even uploaded these, but uh, a few people asked for them on Instagram. So I thought I'll just throw them up there, make it a dollar for all five and you guys can use those for whatever you want. Uh, but cool, I think that's gonna be, uh, be it for today. Thanks for coming and hanging out guys. Hope you have a great, great Friday, good weekend and I will see you uh, at the earliest uh, next week. So see you next time. Have a great, uh, great rest of your day. All right. Bye guys.